Hi everybody, welcome back to musicmoose.org. We're going to get back into the stylings now of Earl Scruggs and uh, get into another tune, pick apart another tune, a very well-known tune in the Scruggs style called Cripple Creek. And uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about this tune and, and also as well I'm going to be talking about subtleties in timing. In, in this tune and in the stylings of Earl's playing and especially in his backup which I'm going to be getting into um, really shortly in these lessons. But for right now we're going to do a little bit of the Cripple Creek and I'm just going to play a little bit for you right now. Cripple Creek in the style, in the stylings of Earl Scruggs, and we're going to pick this this tune apart here uh, in the upcoming lessons. But before we do, again, we're going to be talking about subtleties in timing uh, in this tune, Cripple Creek. And now I'd just like to go to the board, if we can, and talk about a little bit more about musical notation. And if you remember, going back to previous lessons, I spoke about the time values of the four different notes we went over. The whole note, the half note, the quarter note, and the eighth note. And you remember that the whole note in 4-4 four, four time had four beats associated with it. And the half note had two beats associated with it. The quarter note had one beat associated with it and the eighth note had a half a beat associated with it. Now we're going to look at rests in musical notation. And um, we're going to start with the whole rest. Now I'm going to be going over this in the next lesson as well, but you can see what the whole rest looks like here on the board. Um, if you look on the, on the staff of the musical notation, you'll see a, bla a little black box that's going to hang below the, the line of the staff and you can think th about that hanging below the line as being heavy okay so it's it's hanging down beneath the line and that's containing all the four beats now the thing about the rests is there's no playing being done okay it's just in the count so if if you saw a whole rest you wouldn't play you wouldn't play anything but you'd still count um, the four beats, okay? And again, I'm going to be going over this a little bit more in the next lesson. And next we have the half rest, okay? Now the half rest is just the opposite of the whole rest, as in uh, the little black box square you see there is going to be above uh, the line in, in the staff, okay? And again, when you see that, that's going to have two beat rest, okay? two beats where you wouldn't be playing anything if you saw that within a measure in musical notation. And next you'll see the symbol for a quarter rest. And you can see it's sort of like a squiggly line um, 
sort of looks like a leech, doesn't it? If uh, some of you bass fishermen out there know what a black leech looks like, live bait, that's what, sort of what it looks like, that, that quarter rest right there. Again, if you see that in musical notation, uh, you're going to be resting for one beat. And then moving down to the last note that we're going to be dealing with, again, these four notes, is the eighth rest. And you can see the symbol there. It has a, uh, a black, sort of a black dot with a slanted line connected to it. And the eighth, eighth note rest is going to have uh, a half beat rest associated with it. And again, we're going to be getting into this in the next lesson. Um, again, in the styling, in, in, the, in, the, in the playing, oh, I just lost my mic, but I'm going to keep it going right here, everybody. Um, in the stylings of Earl Scruggs' playing, the subtleties in timing, especially in his backup, is, uh, involves a lot of these things in music. And we're going to, again, go over, go over it a little bit and talk about a little bit. Uh, of those timing subtleties in this tune. Cripple Creek now for you. So we'll see you next time, everybody, right here on the moose, musicmoose.org.